Hey guys, Nintendo here. If you've played the Nintendo 64 recently, or another early 3D era console, you probably played it on a modern television. And if you did, you might have seen something like this. The N64 uses a composite video signal with a maximum resolution of 480p, so the picture tends to be kind of fuzzy and hard to look at. But with the help of some kind of adapter or converter, what if you could play all your favorite classic games like this? What you're watching is not footage captured from an emulator or an HD re-release of Star Fox 64, but rather, this is footage from that very same console and is running on real original hardware. The difference is, I've leveraged a powerful AI model to transform that low-res grainy signal into what you see now on the right side of your screen. In this video, I'll show you how I put this footage together, I'll share some interesting things I learned along the way, and we'll talk a bit about how neural networks might play a role in the retro gaming space in years to come. Let's get to it. Now, generally speaking, if you want to play retro games in high definition, you would probably turn to Nintendo's most hated four-letter word, emulation. <laughs> because an emulator is able to render games at a higher resolution than what is typically possible on the original hardware, this method is king. For all practical purposes, if you want to play older games at a higher fidelity, this is the way to do so. And yet, still, there is undeniably a desire within the retro gaming community to play these games on their original hardware. Whether due to issues with emulation inaccuracies, consistency in performance for speedruns, or just that nostalgic cool factor, many players have decided that the real deal is the only way to go. And companies like Marseille, Eon, and Photofast, with the M Classic, Super 64, and 4K Gamer Plus adapters respectively, have capitalized on this market. These modern products promise to improve your aging console's video output, if only just enough to make them a bit cleaner and easier on the eyes. Speaking of which, keep an eye out over the next couple weeks because this adapter just came in and I'll have a full review for you guys going up very soon. Uh, it's more for modern stuff like the Switch, but I figured I'd mention it here anyway. But back to the topic at hand, these adapters are what first got me thinking. With all of these efforts to clean up low resolution video signals, where are we headed exactly? What is the best possible adapter that I could theoretically buy in 10 or more years to help boost the signal for all my retro systems? At what point do we hit the upper limit of what is technically possible from a machine that was manufactured almost 30 years ago? Now, as a YouTuber, I deal with a lot of video footage, and I also deal with a lot of video software. And one piece of software that grabbed my attention recently is Topaz Video AI. This toolset offers a variety of video upscaling AI models trained upon countless hours of live action and computer generated footage that allows you to re-render your low resolution files at much higher fidelity with a wide array of customizable inputs. And to be clear, this video is not sponsored by Topaz, it's just something I have personally found useful. It's basically the closest thing we have in real life to the old CSI bit where they enhance some grainy security footage and find the face of the killer in the reflection of a vending machine or something like that. So in the name of science, I decided to use the Proteus algorithm to simulate what a hardware solution in the near future could potentially accomplish. I wanted to take that dated blocky footage from my real Nintendo 64 and elevate it to maximum potential with the power of machine learning. And I think you'll agree, the results were pretty cool. The way this works is that the AI is trained upon hours and hours of high resolution footage, and it is also shown what that footage looks like when hampered by low resolution, compression artifacts, and noisy video signals. By drawing connections between these two kinds of inputs, the AI learns how to work backwards from a grainy, low resolution image and sort of paint in extra details over it to approximate what would have been seen from the original high resolution source. Of course, some small details are lost here and there, and certain things might look a little bit off, but overall I think this could be a compelling option for folks who aren't quite satisfied with the look of the original experience, but still want to play on the real machine. Now, Topaz Video AI and other tools like it can take low-quality video files and try to approximate what they would look like when filmed at higher resolutions, but they take a ton of computing power to render that final result. And if we're talking about building some kind of adapter for video games in the future, we would need something that could run in real time without introducing any kind of substantial input lag. Depending on what kind of hardware you're using, an hour of footage could take a day or more to finish processing through one of these algorithms. So will we ever actually get to play the games of our childhood like this? Well, I don't think we're too far off. 
NVIDIA is already doing something similar with their DLSS technology, as demonstrated in this excellent video from 2020 by Two Clicks Philip. For games running natively on newer NVIDIA graphics cards, you can internally render at resolutions as low as 240p and then use their AI model to scale that footage back up to a shockingly convincing high-definition image. On top of that, the new 4000 series of RTX cards supports frame interpolation, which can actually draw more frames of video between regular render cycles, bringing lower frame rates up to a cool 60fps and beyond. Kind of like a much smarter version of the smooth motion option available on many modern TVs. What this practically means is, someone could theoretically write a piece of software to leverage the NVIDIA DLSS SDK and Tensor Cores, along with a low latency capture device, to upscale video signals in real time, which could actually work for this kind of application today. It could even be used as a solution for watching old home videos, VHS tapes, or DVDs at ultra high definition resolutions. I'm tempted to write a program like this myself, but regardless, there's no doubt in my mind that this technology will exist and be far more accessible in the very near future. By the way, if you like this sort of discussion and are interested in the concepts behind this kind of tech, you should definitely check out Brilliant.org. Brilliant is the best way to learn the fundamentals of math, science, and computer science through hands-on bite-sized tutorials. I have a degree in computer science, and I like using Brilliant to brush up on my college curriculum, but you don't have to have any formal education to get started on your learning goals. They have thousands of lessons on everything from basic math and logic, all the way to multivariable calculus, quantum mechanics, and yes, even artificial neural networks and machine learning. Brilliant's visual, interactive approach is incredibly engaging and makes STEM concepts actually stick. Plus, with new lessons added each month that you can finish in just 15 minutes, you can feel free to dip in and dip out, learning as much or as little as you want to in any given session. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash nintendrew or click on the link in the description below. And if you happen to be watching this video early, the first 200 viewers will actually get a 20% discount on their annual premium subscription. So definitely take a look if you're interested, and thank you to Brilliant for sponsoring this portion of today's episode. Now, if you're like me, at this point you might be asking yourself, why? Why go to all this trouble to, for lack of a better phrase, polish a turd? <laughs> and to that I say, fair. This is a situation where I was more interested in learning what would be possible rather than finding a practical solution for real life. In reality, I'm fine with how my N64 looks, and that blurry, pixelated image is honestly part of what gives those games their charm. If I find myself wanting a more modern experience, emulation is a perfectly fine way to revisit them too. But I'd be lying if I didn't admit to having a bit of fun figuring out what sort of modern inventions might be possible for the retro gaming community in the near future. With the rapid advancements of artificial intelligence and machine learning, I think we can all look forward to seeing their effects on our aging technology in the years to come. But what do you think? Would you buy some sort of magic adapter that could convincingly upscale your old consoles to 1080p and beyond? Do you prefer that old-school nostalgia factor of jagged edges and blurry textures? Or are you somewhere in the middle? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. As always, if you did like the video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye!